want to dive into a comment I saw from Devonte Adams. Now, I, I, I was at, I left Fresno State and went to Philly, and then Devonte came in, so I, I never was around him. Though I know a lot of people that know him really well, and I know his basically mentor slash wide receiver coach in college is now wide receiver coach with the Ravens. Swears by Devonte Adams, and I'm a huge Devonte guy. I think he's everything you'd want in a guy on your team in terms of talent, in terms of leadership, in terms of work ethic. But he he had some comments that kind of went viral, you know, and kind of rightfully so. And, and this is after they won, and they're three and three. Despite I got a couple buddies that are Raider fans that text me after they saw these comments. They're like, the craziest part about this team is they're three and three. Like, how the hell are they three and three, John? I'm like, well, they just played the Patriots. That that helped. But but here's what Devontae said. He said, I'm a human being, and I have extremely high standards for myself in this offense. I'm sure people are thinking, they won the game. Why is there an issue? I mean, you see why it's an issue. Y'all should know who I am. Know what I'm about at this point. When you're a player like me, mentally, my benchmark is not wins and losses. It's greatness. So when I get out there, I expect to be able to have the ability to put that on tape and have an influence on the game. That's my purpose for being here. I'm not here to just hang out. I came here to win and do it the right way. And this this statement and comments have been taken a million different ways. And I saw a bunch of people on Instagram, former NFL players, kind of ripping them. I've seen people defend them. James Jones, guys that have played with them. Listen, I I feel confident in what I know about him and the people I know and trust what they think about this guy. I take Devontae Adams any day of the week. But I don't feel sympathy, sympathy for him here. He was playing for the Green Bay Packers with a guy who was rattling off MVPs. And he chose, because the Packers were willing, well, it got a little weird the year before, but they were willing to pay every penny that the Raiders paid to Devontae Adams. And he said, I don't want your money. I want to be traded. And it's one thing to say you want to be traded. I've said before, hell, I just did it last year. I've moved. I I don't, in my job, I'm not restricted where I can live. So anyone at a certain point in time in their career, even in pro sports, like, I don't want to be here anymore, I understand it. And if he just said, hey, I want to be traded, I get it. Like, it's time. He could sense the end was near with Aaron Rodgers. But he said not only... I want to be traded. I want to go to the Raiders. And that's where, honestly, I got to put up a red flag. Because if you were at Apple, and then all of a sudden Radio Shack called, and they said, listen, we can pay you a lot of money, come here. And you leave, and you're having a lot of success at Apple, that's on you, buddy. You went to the Raiders, who weren't just a perpetual loser, but have just been a consistent disaster. But here's the other thing. Despite all the craziness around the Raiders, over the last 20 plus years that you have lived through because you grew up a Raider fan. You wanted to play with your buddy, Derek Carr. Okay, I get it. Here's the problem. Like, you know what Aaron Rodgers looks like. And then before the season even ends, Derek gets sent home and he's gone. And now you're playing with Jimmy Garoppolo and Brian Hoyer. And this week you're playing with Brian Hoyer. Like, this is the Raiders, bro. Like, you left an organization that we can say, hey, the Packers don't have an owner. You know, the Packers have some limitations. The Packers live in a small town. I I get it. But the great part about being a pro athlete is like what I do, if I'm going to make money, unless I start some new profession, I can do this the rest of my life. As long as I can talk, as long as I can come up with interesting shit to say, as long as I still enjoy watching football and golf and and just life, I can podcast, right? As an athlete, your time's limited. So this limitation, I get you have aspirations to play for your hometown team, even though ironically they're in, uh, even though, and he grew up in Palo Alto, but you know what I mean? It actually benefited Devontae because he gets to go to Vegas, no state income tax, making a lot more money now, much cooler place to live than Oakland, California. I promise you that I'd rather be in Vegas too. But you chose that organization and you chose a quarterback situation and a coach. Like you, you, you chose to like go play for Josh McDaniels, which let's face it is more than a question mark. Even Raider fans listening to this right now and go, Middlecoff, you're just a hater. You're always talking shit about the Raiders. Tell me what you really think about Josh McDaniels. You're the same guy telling your buddy week after week, we need to fire this guy. Where, listen, he had just been playing and dominating with uh, with LaFleur. So I don't have an issue with the comments. I get Devontae being frustrated. Because when you're a great player at wide receiver, 
shit is out of your control. You need a wide receiver to be able to get you the ball. But you signed up for this place. Like It'd be one thing if you were going to a consistent winner. You went to a place over 20 years, was the laughing stock of the league. And, and so you complaining like, uh, like no one should know it better than you, a guy who had a front row seat growing up rooting for this team. So I, I, it's hard for me to have sympathy from the playing standpoint. Now the Miami Dolphins. What they have done this year offensively has been a joy to watch. If you just like turning on the TV and watching them light up the scoreboard, it is really fun. Tyreek Hill has gone to Miami and for two straight years put a stamp on his Canton, uh, future Canton candidacy, right? This guy is an all-time great player. I, he's actually, for as great as he was in Kansas City, all-time great champion, all-time great player, all-time great winner, all-time great playmaker in big spots. It was like, is he just kind of check it out, going there for the payday? No. He went there to kick ass and take names enjoyable team to watch. They're drafting running backs, they're signing other sweet running backs, Waddle, awesome. But I think a lot of people, because it is really fun, feel a little bit like an NBA team that's scoring a lot of points. Like, well, you don't play defense, and who have you played? So I wrote down their opponents, and I went, well, you know, they're five and one. What, what does it really look like? The first week, which is their best win, was the Chargers, and that was when Brandon Staley, somehow who's an NFL head coach, literally did not cover Tyreek Hill. Put him one-on-one -on -one with a guy that had no clue what he's doing and currently is not on the team anymore. Then they played the Pats, who absolutely stink. Then they played the Broncos, who might be worse. Then they played the Bills and got curb stomped. Then they played the Giants, also stink. And then they just beat the Panthers, who, let's face it, might win one game. So... I'm not trying to diminish how fun the Bron uh, Miami Dolphins have been because you, you can only play the people on your schedule. And unlike college, you don't make the schedule. The league does. Every team's in the NFL. You're playing a bunch of people. They're getting paid too. But let's face it, their schedule, beside the Bills, has been pretty fucking easy. And they've annihilated these guys. And everyone putting the Miami Dolphins right now in like the Eagles and Niners class, who have obviously proven it now for a couple years, the Bills, who have consistently gone to the playoffs, and obviously the Chiefs and the Bengals, other teams that have just been consistently winning, I think we need to pump the brakes a little bit. Now, I will be the first one to admit, if they play on Sunday Night Football and they beat the Eagles, I will tip my hat to them and call them a real team. But if, like the Bills game, they get outplayed, like, I I'm sorry. <laughs> I I'm just not going to treat them like these same teams. On the road, I get it. It's not at home. But you played the Bills on the road, a divisional game. All you had to do, you're allowed to lose that game. You got beat. You got destroyed. You got embarrassed. You got curb stopped. So now when you're playing the Eagles, who, let's face it, unlike the Bills, have not exactly been peaking. They're not exactly playing their best ball. They just lost. Their quarterback's in shambles. Like, you don't even need to win the game. Can you just keep it close? Because I'll be honest, I'm not someone who has just anointed them. Think they're a fun team. I'll be the first, like, they're going to the playoffs. But, like, are they a threat to make noise in the playoffs? Because more than likely, they're going to have to go on the road. I definitely am not picking this team in inclement weather. But let's just see them beat a good team before we start acting like, oh, the Dolphins, you know, fucking Super Bowl contender. Pump the brakes there. This is a big week for me to see the Dolphins beat a real team.